Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Sorcerer King Rivals with me, Get Daved. Now, kind of having a glitch right now, so let's just see what happens. Welcome to the dwarves. Okay, who are your kindred? Oh yeah, bad news. Same one who's been sitting is, yeah. Wow, these guys seem very agreeable. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Well, we had an honorable discussion. That turned out well. Um, if I click the report button, I think the game is just going to crash. It's happened the last three or four times. Kind of a bummer, but that's okay. Oh yeah, there we go. Right, I thought that already happened. Maybe that was pre-cash. Anyway, we, we got Z the Archon. Results, Paragon the Ranger. Oh boy, game. All right, well, either way, we're sending a sentinel over to Tylen, um, because I didn't really clean the place up. So I feel like who would be responsible for me to protect it? Uh, okay, there's another Z the Archon. That did already happen. Um, oh, game, don't come unglued. Let's put you in the corner. I don't want to cheat. I mean, I'm willing to, don't get me wrong. You guard that spot with your life. Alright, a little bit of a misstep there. Got all sorts of good stuff there. I think this is the title screen music again. <laughs> uh, the game's coming unglued. Are you gonna loop? I'm starting, yep, okay, I'm starting to get a little concerned. So I've had more patience than usual with the game, because bugs upset me. Um, both like computer glitches, and I just don't really care for bugs if I'm being brutally honest. Uh, you there. Go to Tylen as well. Do we have the Sentinel guarding there? Good. Uh, I, this game is, I think, important. The restoration of Paradin must not be delayed. Yeah, sure. Sweet! Postponing our doom. That's what I like to hear. Um, right, forging. I'm all about the recipes now. Yeah, um... The Yetis are gone. <laughs> well, uh... Remember when you didn't go over there? That turned out to be a great thing. Of course, there's probably going to be a wandering army. Okay, um... Yeah, I'm still a little worried about whole frontier town. So I'd like to shore up the defenses there. Don't die on me, game. Let's queue up some stables, why not? Uh, yeah, so, more patience than normal for this game. Uh, the reason is... That they fixed... Wow, the drake's gone? No drake. 
but thugs. One, two, yeah, they could attack my unit. Let's just... Uh-oh. Archon, can you do it? Yeah, there we go. Or just... That's fine. That's fine. Good work, everyone. So... 4X games have been stagnant for a long time, in my opinion. And this game fixes a lot of the fundamental problems. Ugh, and now Z isn't with this group. Uh, packs of wild drugs. Okay, let's see what happened. Alright, we gotta check that place out. But what this game has done is expanded on what Elemental was good at, which was um, making like the exploration phase really interesting for a game. Why can you not settle? There's yields. Oh, but this is still recorded as like... is enemy territory. Okay, well, at least I'll... Outpost here and we'll take some grain. Costing me nothing but logistics. Oh boy. Um, the other... So the exploration phase is good. There's interesting things. It feels like going on an adventure, you know? Um, all trained units gain one level. Neat. Yeah, this music's making me grow crazy. I don't know if we can do much about it. I mean, it's not a bad tune. I generally prefer the more peaceful music this game has. But, uh, you know, that's... Nothing wrong with a sweeping orchestra, either. Alright, pillaged, and... Okay, we can't fight them. All right. Sorry, game. I'm declaring you. Well, let's see if we can craft anything neat. A chain shirt. Oh, and plate gear. Remember that? That was nice. Lightning storm. All sorts of good stuff. Leveled up shields. A ring of extreme haste. Lots of cool stuff. All right, I'm just going to give my thoughts, and then we'll call it a Let's Play, unfortunately. Um, so the logistics system, it's superficially kind of like command points um, from Master of Orion or lots of 4X games, but basically you have a capacity for the number of units, military or otherwise you can build but it does a couple important things a you can build it a bit more explicitly in master of orion there's tech that gives you command points and uh, buildings so you can build like a star base or a battle station or a star fortress and that gives you more as well and then some races also have a perk so there's lots of ways of getting it uh, and indeed there's a couple ways of getting logistics in this game as well but they're kind of restrained and Units use logistics and lots of other things are limiting it. And what it does is it limits your growth and it also gives you a global resource that's being managed across all of your cities. What screws things up, in my opinion, in a lot of 4X games is like you just want to build every colony the same way. I don't think they took it quite far enough in this, but here, because like, I mean, all you want is maximum economic output from a colony. This one has a couple things going on. One is logistics. And the other is Essence. Essence kind of forces you to specialize your cities and plan out a little bit what you're going to do because those yields are determining things. And again, other games have similar ideas, but this is pushing it a little bit further in a good way. And then logistics, by being a shared resource, it makes you not want to necessarily build everything you can. Um, or it makes you think, I want to build 
you know, this town doesn't really need a town hall, but I need logistics, logistics on the empire scale. So it makes it a bit more interesting where building a colony or a city or whatever isn't just this isolated thing. It's in a larger context and it's not just like, okay, how long till I get the maximum economic output from this place to just throw resources into the research pool is realistically how it normally goes. So I really like that. I think that's really important and I think it solves scalability problems and um, repetition problems. Because my big beef with modern 4X games is that there's too much built-in repetition. And this, you might still do the same thing a lot, but it gives you something new to think about at least. Like, it makes it a choice, essentially. Um, so that's a really good thing. Um, the bad would be it's buggy, 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 which is too bad. It's even buggier than Elemental was. So this is like a really cool iteration on Elemental. Um, it makes me wish that the people who make Age of Wonders 3? Yeah, that one was fantastic. It makes me wish they just sort of copy some of the ideas, because between Galsiv 3 and this, Stardock has put out sequels um, that were well-meaning and had some strong suits, particularly in this one. I think the writing's hilarious and awesome and like it makes it more fun, but too buggy. Um, and I can forgive some glitches and I can forgive some mistakes, essentially. But I mean, you gotta be able to play through a game without it crashing because of internal logic flaws. Like, this just... And it's been out for years and it's still in this state and it just makes me think like may, what probably happened this is just speculation but I mean they probably released it and there's just not like enough ongoing support for it to uh, justify having like a couple full-time developers keeping an eye on it and maybe like I don't know that's just speculation but I mean it seems like you know what, let's even, let's even check. Can I see, like, when the last update was published? I'm trying to just take a look at the old Steam data. I don't know, it just seems like they've stopped. And, okay, the last update they announced was five months ago. And then it was six months before that that they did the last update. I don't know. Why are there so many bugs? I just don't know. And, and kind of egregious ones. Like, we haven't really had a playthrough without significant trouble to it. Anyway, it, it's, it's so sad because if this were a board game, it would be perfect. <laughs> Um, it's the, the problem isn't with the rules and I, and f I really do believe as a person who loves 4X games in theory, Master of Orion 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. A whole bunch of people have tried to copy with it, but they copy the flaws that should have been iterated on and fixed. And they double down on them and then they miss out on some of the strengths and they sort of uh, don't understand some of the pacing subtleties that Mu2 got right. And that's gone on for 20 years and nobody's improved on it. Um, until this, this set of rules, like the rules that were bad in Master of Ride and created scalability problems and repetition and lather, rinse, repeat, a little bit too much of that. Those flaws were with the rules of the game. And they're, they're kind of fixed here. They're improved on anyway. There might be a little bit more work to do, but this is like the first meaningful step. Elemental didn't do it. Elemental had the good exploration, so they really fixed... Um, a phase that was good in most 4X games, but over too soon. Um, and to be fair, Stardock tried doing that with Galactic Civilizations, but this is just way better. And this is how it should always... Maybe it shouldn't always be this way with our exploration and our quests and our marching around with our army and our look, checking things out. But that should be like a standard against which all of these things are measured. Okay? Because like... You look at Master of Ryan Conquer the Stars or Endless Space 2 where you're like exploring along star lanes and it's like there's no choices. I mean here I mean at least you're always constantly making the implicit okay I see a treasure chest there 
swarm bad guys there if that could be experience points and i see a potential quest there and then there's just stuff i've never seen before over there like the blackness the the fog of war or unmapped territory so that's like the grab bag anything could be behind there it's brilliant it goes on for much of the game it's it's so good they found a way to link all of the cities together. They found a way to make a 4X game that wasn't about just wiping out all of the other people on the map. You can. You can just declare war. But then people just disappear in the middle of a game. And you can't click this. Or it crashes. And it's so sad. Sorcerer King Rivals has stopped working. Windows will close the program and notify you if a solution is available. Like, it hurts so much because this game could have done it. It could have, it could have taken, it, this is the golden path that uh, leads us forward on the 4X genre. The, it's just, it's just a shame. Anyway, I'm talking in circles now. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, sorry it had to end like this. I really, really want to recommend the game. Keep an eye on it. See if they get their act together. Because, I mean, Stardock, they could. If they just smooth it out, everything will fall into place. And especially if they iterate it on the way they did for Elemental, where they had a couple expansion packs. And, like, if they added like a little bit more customizability on your units and everything, my goodness. They just sort of added the features that Elemental did have that this one doesn't, and they kept sort of the good things that they got going here. It would be, oh, what a game they could make. What a game they nearly made. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next Let's Play.